Now, coming to the treatment of ileal atresia. Suppose we are getting a child with a bilious emesis, abdominal distension, air fluid levels in the bowel and positive of air shadows distally. How will we approach the child? For this, we have to know the preoperative management before the proper decision making is done. So, the preoperative management include the proximal gastric and intestinal decompression to prevent aspiration, that is, Ryle's tube aspiration or nasogastric aspiration. Fluid maintenance by the fluid fluid management. It can be by the maintenance dose and uh, replace the deficiency and prevent the ongoing losses. The ongoing losses include the biliary aspirate. Biliary aspirate. Aspirate. So, maintenance fluid is by the holiday cigar formula. The replacement is by the uh, finding the percentage of the dehydration like 5%, 10%, 15% of dehydration correct accordingly. As far as the ongoing loss are concerned, if the aspirate is bilious, we have to uh, replace it with ringer lactate, if, especially if it is more than 30 ml per, 30 ml per day. And if the aspirate is non-bilious, we have to replace it with the half an or 0.45% normal serine. That is how we fluid management of ileal atresia is done. Now a plain abdominal radiograph with air contrast is taken and a contrast enema is also made sure to rule out other differential diagnosis. Now you have to do a complete blood workup and we have to correct if there are any hematological abnormalities like anemia or if there is any so diselectrolemias and biochemical abnormalities. If there is a coagulation parameters are deranged uh, by increased PTNR or APDT, an injection vitamin K is also helpful. Prophylactic antibiotics are also given in case of ileal atresia. Now, before we go into the abdomen, we have to know what are we going to expect inside the abdomen. For this, we have to know the different types of jejuno ileal atresia. Now, this bland certain, we have already seen the picture of bland or bland certain. His, uh, his classification with a small modification is this is this classification of the different types of atresia. In type 1 atresia, you see this is a type 1 atresia, you can see the bowel is continuous. The bowel is continuous, the mesentery, there is no mesentery defect and we are seeing a dilated proximal bowel and a distal collapsed bowel and that means there is an obstruction here. So that is called a type 1 atresia. This is a clinical picture of type 1 atresia where we can see a dilated proximal bowel, a collapsed distal bowel and no mesentric and no mesentric or bowel discontinuity. In case of type 2 atresia, there is a proximal, there is proximal, in type case of type 2 dilated atresia, there is proximal dilated bowel, a distal collapsed bowel and there is a fibrous cord connecting in between and there is no mesentric defect. The clinical picture is like this. The clinical picture is like this. There is a dilated proximal bowel, dilated proximal bowel, collapsed distal bowel and a fibrous cord connecting it. The mesentery is intact. In both type 1 and type 2 atresia, there will not be much loss of bowel length. So, the different types of atresia are type 1, type 2. In type 1 atresia, there is a variant. So, we have in, in both type 1 and type 2 atresia, there is no much loss of bowel length. But in the in case of a type 1, in case of a type 1 atresia, there is a variant known as the Winsock variant. In that case, we can see that the obstruction is starting from here, but the Due to the ballooning of the obstruction, the atretic membrane has ballooned like this. Has ballooned like this. We have to be very careful about, about this because if we, the original obstruction in this case is here. We have already said that. Suppose if we, when we see this picture, the obstruction appear to be like this due to the Winsock, Winsock deformity. So, if we do an anastomosis from here to here, we are done because we are going to do an anastomosis distal to the uh, site of the uh, actual site of the membrane. So, this Winsock effect we have to keep always in our mind. Now, coming to the type 3. Type 3 can be classified into two type 3A and type 3B. 
in type 3a the bowel in type 3a the in type 3a the bowel is discontinuous bowel is discontinuous and there is also a mesenteric defect so in this case we can see this is a classical clinical picture the dilated proximal bowel and this is a dilated proximal bowel and this is a distal bowel which is constricted and there is a mesenteric defect and bowel discontinuity defect this is due to a major vascular insult that there is a clear cut atritic segment in between and this is associated with loss of bowel length type 3 atresias are generally associated with worse prognosis in case of iliac atresia or maximum amount of death now type 3b atresia is called so is called an apple peel atresia type 3b atresia is called an apple peel atresia we can see that this is a blind loop here of the proximal bowel and the distal colon is is distal is small intestine is like an is kept like an apple peel around the superior mesenteric artery around the thin superior mesenteric artery so what is the problem with it what is the problem with this this part has a precarious blood supply this part has a, this distal part has a precarious blood supply this is the clinical picture of the apple peel atresia and since it has a precarious blood supply which is liable for resection and which can result in a short bowel syndrome there, there is only short bowel the child will have to go in for a total parental nutrition and have i will have a malnutrition li lifelong due to the short bowel now that is regarding type 3b atresia now comes the type 4 atresia type 4 atresia is multiple atresia there are multiple segments of atresia this is like sausages that are present so that is that this is a picture of a showing a multiple atresia we can see atresia here we can see atresia here we can see atresia somewhere here so these are a picture of a multiple atresia now coming to the next one that is the when we see when we see this so keep in our mind our this type 1 type 2 type 3a and b and type 4 atresia when we see this picture it is oh it is easy we can just detect once opening the abdomen it is not always that easy this is a clinical picture of one of one of the cases we can see what type of atresia is this what do you think this is a proximal dilated segment and you see this is the distal not complete this much is not the color not the distal segment the distal segment is only this much distal segment is only this is a collapsed distal segment and you can see a fibrous cord in between you can see this for this fibrous cord in between and we can also see that the mesentery is intact here mesentery is intact here so this is a type 2 atresia that is a cord connecting both this the mesentery the type 2 atresia the cord connecting both these the mesentery is intact and is called type 2 atresia so then what is this what are we seeing here this is a meconium cyst meconium cyst can complicate atresia because this is some part of this is this is a due to an intrauterine extravasation of meconium from the bowel and the peritoneal reaction around it forming a meconium cyst so in actual clinical practice these atresias may not be appear as classical as we see in figure it will be complicated by meconium cysts meconium pearls meconium peritonitis etc so